Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you didn't know, Linux isn't really just developed by a few volunteers in their garage. It's mainly developed by people working for very big companies like Red Hat, Google, Microsoft, IBM, SUSE, and a lot more. And it's undeniable that Linux wouldn't be what it is today without these companies. But is it a risk for Linux? Could these companies suddenly decide that they want to take control of Linux and move it towards a direction that is not in the best interest of its users? Well, we're gonna talk about it, right after we talk about today's sponsor. Thanks to Tuxcare for sponsoring this video. If you've ever worked on a project using PHP, you know how frustrating it is to know that the version you're using is going end of life and that you're gonna have to upgrade to it quickly with a bunch of refactoring and code rewrites. Well, Tuxcare can now help you to plan that transition thanks to their PHP extended lifecycle support. With that new service, you can keep your existing code base and still receive security updates and patches to PHP, even if it's no longer officially supported. This means that if your code base still meets your operational requirements, it can also still meet your security requirements and you get some more time to plan the transition. If you want to learn more about Tuxcare's PHP extended lifecycle support, you can click on the link in the description below. Okay, first let's look at how much of a Linux operating system is contributed by these big companies. If we start with the Linux kernel, in 2020 for version 5.10, there were almost 2000 different contributors, only 252 of which shared their first contribution to the kernel. 228 companies also contributed work, and the top 20 companies contributed 70% of the changes in the kernel itself. Now the biggest contributors? They are Huawei, Intel, Red Hat, Google, but we also see Facebook, Oracle and Samsung in there. It's not really a surprise, these big companies use Linux in their own products and it's in their best interest to ensure that Linux supports their hardware, their services, or works for what they need to do. The easiest solution for them is to directly contribute the code that they actually need instead of waiting for other people to decide suddenly that they want to work on that. But this doesn't mean that all the code these companies want to push is accepted. The code is signed off on by subsystem maintainers and reviewers who aren't the same persons who wrote the code. And there, we see that big companies also have a hand on code validation, with Red Hat, Facebook, Google and Huawei being among the biggest. And these people who sign off on the code basically say, OK, we check that and we're OK for it to be merged. So unless there's a big problem at the testing level or at the Linus Torvalds level, this code is going to make it in which also seems to indicate that these big companies control what is going in the kernel. Which, hey, good, because that's kind of the premise of this video, so no clickbait. But our operating systems aren't just made of a Linux kernel. What about desktop environments, for example? Well, numbers are way harder to come by. But in the 2022 GNOME Health reports, we can find a few interesting details. GNOME seems mostly developed by unaffiliated developers. Individuals that don't necessarily work for a big company, or at least who worked on the project on their own behalf and not that of their employer. Now sure we see contributions from people working at SUSE, Canonical, Sun, Intel or Red Hat, but most contributions are personal, or people working at other companies which presumably were too small to all be named. And while it is pretty hard to find numbers for other projects, we can all assume that it's basically in the same ballpark. Big companies are mostly interested in the Linux kernel because that's the main thing they need to actually run Linux on their servers or implement the features that they want to bring to the Linux system. Still, without a kernel, we don't really have a functional operating system. So let's see how this is handled. Big companies seem to basically power Linux's development and decide which code goes in by reviewing each other's patches. Or at least developers hired by these big companies do. The difference is important. It's not like it's Mark Zuckerberg directly influencing what the Linux kernel can or can't do. He has employees that work on specific things that they try to push to the Linux kernel to ensure that Mark Zuckerberg gets what he wants. 
which seems to be tanking his own company and losing a lot of money just so that crappy me avatars can have legs in his metaverse that nobody wants, but that's his choice. And Linux, as a project, doesn't really have a roadmap. It's not like people meet in a boardroom to decide what they will focus on next. People just propose their work, and it's either accepted or not. Of course, patches to the kernel are also addressed to the maintainers of the system the patch affects. And these maintainers give the go-ahead or not. But since most contributions to the Linux kernel are made by companies, a lot of these maintainers also work for big companies. And then, all the way to the top, you have Linus Torvalds, which has the final say-so for each patch. So, even if we assume that all companies that work on the Linux kernel are inherently evil, and that they really want to push some shady code to the Linux kernel to make some good stuff for their business and some bad stuff for the users, one would also have to assume that all the maintainers that work for them are completely enthralled by these big companies, and so they are evil as well. And then we would also have to assume that Linus Torvalds is also completely evil. But who is Linus Torvalds working for exactly? Well, he's working for the Linux Foundation. The Linux Foundation is a big actor in how Linux is shaped and where it goes. It's a non-profit whose main goal is to promote Linux and many other open source projects. They are here to standardize things, to protect the Linux platform, to offer services, and also to make sure that no one forgets that Linux exists and dominates the server space. And if we look at the board of directors for the Linux Foundation, we find a lot of big companies again. Sony, Intel, Huawei, Tencent, Meta, IBM, Microsoft, Samsung, Oracle, and a lot more. So we come full circle. No matter how well organized and managed the Linux kernel development is, the code is actually contributed by people working for big companies that implement stuff that big companies want. The code is signed off on by maintainers that also work for big companies, and at the top, the patches are accepted or not by Linus Torvalds, who is employed by the Linux Foundation, who is controlled by a board of directors made of big companies. But is that really a problem? Well, if we assume companies are all evil and all want to make money out of Linux at the detriment of users by adding some shady code to the kernel or pushing their own agendas, it could be a problem. If we also assume that everyone that works on the kernel on the behalf of these companies lacks a soul and would just go through with it. And if we also assume that Torvalds will be okay with it as well. If we assume all of that, then yes, it could be a problem. But that's a lot to assume. Like, I don't think the world is that evil. But still, let's pretend that it is. Well, Linux might be mainly developed by people working for big companies, but it's still open source. You can still fork it, you can still grab the code, modify it, and redistribute it. And you can also look at the code and detect all that potential shady stuff. Which means the minute anything remotely weird, privacy invasive, or limiting to users makes it to the kernel, you will get an immediate fork, or at least a new kernel version being distributed, which removes all that crap. So even if big companies are evil and everyone involved in Linux's development has become evil as well, basically you would never be reached by all that supposedly shady code, because you would use a distribution that doesn't ship the shady kernel. You would use a distribution that uses a cleaned up kernel. Open source is the ultimate accountability method. If you try to ruin a project by sneaking some weird privacy invasive code or some weird backdoors, then your users are just going to fork it and move to something else. And for as long as the kernel has existed, I don't think I've ever heard of a single instance of a big company trying to mess up with the kernel by adding something that is inherently bad for users. Now, also important to remember, these big companies don't contribute just for fun. They contribute what they want or need to make their own products, services, and businesses run. When Samsung contributes to Linux, it's to add a feature they need for Tizen or Android, or support some new hardware device. When Microsoft contributes, it's because they use Linux in Azure and they want to improve virtualization support. Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, or ARM add support for their own devices. And Meta probably tries to, I don't know, make servers run better for the metaverse? Maybe? The point is, these companies all use what they code. And if they 
ship crappy code, they basically torpedo themselves. And it also works as some kind of mutually assured destruction. If a company ever wanted to add some crappy code into the kernel, it would hurt its competitors who also use Linux. So these guys would oppose the patch or refuse to let it through. And the company would probably end up being banned from contributing at all. And okay, when I said that I didn't know of any instance where a company tried to slip some shady code into the kernel, I lied. There is one instance. In 2020, a Huawei developer tried to add a patch that had a trivially easy to exploit vulnerability. The patch never made it through the review process because the Linux kernel team saw where the contribution was coming from, what it affected, and they decided to look extra hard at it. And of course, Huawei said that this patch wasn't contributed on their behalf, that the developer acted of his own accord, whatever you believe what you want. The point is, if a security patch comes from Google or from Huawei or from Microsoft, you can be extra sure that maintainers from the other companies are gonna look extra hard at it. And also, Linus Torvalds is the ultimate gatekeeper on the kernel. What goes in or not goes through him. And fortunately, Torvalds is aware that corporate involvement can be tricky to handle. In an interview he gave in 2021, when being asked about financial sustainability, he says he has always been wary of being too tainted by commercial interests. He said that he didn't want to work for a Linux company to avoid that and stay as a neutral party. He also knows that it's not easy to work with companies and that they don't know how to do open source in a lot of cases. And sure, Linus Torvalds isn't the most fervent defender of free software. He prefers the open source model and he had some pretty harsh words for the FSF and Richard Stallman calling some of their ideas too religious or nutty. He's not anti-commercial or anti-company. And that's very probably what helped the Linux kernel get to where it is, which is basically running every server on the planet, more or less. And why GNU Herd, on the other hand, received basically no contribution from anyone. So clearly, Linux's development is done in great part by big companies. Whether they're big tech like Google, Microsoft, or Meta, or big Linux companies like Red Hat and SUSE, these things are the driving force behind the development of our kernel. These companies also sit on the board of directors of the Linux Foundation, who is the biggest promoter of Linux. And I'm not worried about it at all. The open source nature of the Linux kernel code means that if they try to slip something shady in, somebody will notice at some point. And the fact that they all use what they develop means that they're gonna be extra watchful with what each other add to the kernel, so they kinda act as their own gatekeepers. And the fact that Linus Torvalds also knows that companies can be a bit crappy sometimes and is not completely enthralled by these big corporations is a good sign. So yes, big companies do drive Linux, but the minute they go off-road, everybody else can just jump to another bus. There is no problem here. But there is a segue to today's sponsor. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany, but they ship worldwide. And what do they ship? They ship laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. And you might want that instead of buying any generic PC of the internet. Because when you buy from Tuxedo, you know that it is compatible with Linux. And they have a big, nice range of devices from Ultrabooks, Nugs, big laptops, small laptops, towers, gaming laptops, gaming workstations, whatever. You name it, any combination of those words, and you can customize the devices with plenty of different internals, but also with your own logo on the lid, or even your own custom keyboard layout, engraved on the keys, laser etched. So if you need a new computer and you want to make sure that it runs Linux and you want to help support Linux's development, check out the link in the description below and buy yourself a tuxedo device. They're really, really good. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can also dislike and tell me why down there. And if you really want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath the video, a PayPal link in the description, or links to my Patreon memberships or YouTube memberships. Both of these get access to a weekly podcast where I talk about Linux, open source, the channel, my personal life, anything really. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel for the month that comes after. So if you're interested, check out the links in the description. And in the meantime, thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.